Greetings everyone, and today I'm testing something seriously unusual for all of you, the Astrohori 28mm f13 2x probe macro lens. This is a very interesting lens that Astrohori have brought out to compete with a similar Lauer optic, and who doesn't like a bit of competition to make things more affordable? And at 739 US dollars, or about 620 pounds here in the UK, this thing is relatively affordable for such a specialist piece of equipment. I'd like to thank Astrohori for sending me a copy of this lens for evaluation, although, as usual, this is a totally independent review. It's a totally manual lens, which offers a full frame image circle, and it'll be available for Sony E, Fuji X, Nikon Z, Canon RF, L mount. Nikon F, Canon EF, and PL mount cine cameras, so <laughs> it's pretty universal. The lens can focus to infinity and be used for stills photography if you really need to, but this thing is clearly focused on video production, getting close-up images in tight spaces. It actually has an amazing 2 to 1 macro capability, although realistically, you'll never be getting that close to your subject, it'd have to be right up against the front element at the front of the lens. The entire front end of the probe is waterproof though, able to be submerged up to 25 centimeters. mind your camera when shooting around water though. And to top it all off, there are a series of LED lights at the end, which can be adjusted to various strengths. Unfortunately, they're not powered by your camera though, you will need a separate USB battery pack to power them, which plugs in at the rear. Any USB power source will do, such as a small portable recharger. Those lights are really helpful though, as you'd expect, they have a dramatic impact on your final image, for better or sometimes for worse. The build quality of the lens itself is real nice, metallic, tough and tightly assembled, it even comes with its own carry case. The rear of the lens is not weather sealed, but as I mentioned, the front probe is waterproof. At the rear there's a metallic, geared focus ring that turns very precisely and a little heavily. In front of that comes the aperture ring, enabling you to adjust between f13 and f40 for extra depth of field. Although obviously, because of diffraction, the lens is never going to be especially sharp at those very dark apertures. The lens, as you can see, is easy to use. You will want to have a sturdy rig with a decent slider to take full advantage of it though. Handheld video work won't look good. Ok, well, this isn't a typical camera lens by any means, but let's run it through my normal tests all the same. First, let's take a look at sharpness at normal distances, although admittedly that's not going to be the top priority of most of its end users. I'll be testing the lens on a Sony a7R 3 camera with its full frame 42 megapixel sensor. In camera corrections are not available with this lens. At f13, sharpness is reasonably good in the middle of the image, but contrast is definitely low, and there's just a touch of visible chromatic aberration on contrasting edges and the corner image quality, a little softer but still acceptable. It's just a shame about that low contrast, but you can always add some more in post. Stopping down the lens to f16 makes the corners slightly brighter due to reduced vignetting, but a touch softer due to increased diffraction. f22 is soft, f40 unusable, although if you're shooting 1080p video, it'll just about be enough. Let's take a look at vignetting and distortion now on a full frame camera. There's a pinch of pincushion distortion in the very corners of your images, and some rather noticeable vignetting there too, at f13. At f16 and f22, that vignetting is reduced, but it never entirely goes away. And now, close up image quality. These pictures were taken at almost two times magnification. As you can see, the image is noticeably soft at f13, but that's not surprising as, at such close distances, diffraction begins to affect image quality worse than ever. f16 looks about the same, but f22 is very soft. Let's see how well the lens works against bright lights now, although that's not often going to be a major problem when shooting up close, the good news here is that flaring is under control. And finally, bokeh. No problems here, honestly, whether shooting close up or at normal distances. 
Overall, well, I've done my normal photographic tests on this thing, which was fun, but at the end of the day, it really is a lens for video work, where the unique shots it's able to get you, combined with its relatively affordable price, make it highly recommendable to anyone interested in this kind of specialist macro movie making work. Gah, you know, I love testing out unusual camera lenses, even if it takes me a while to get my head around them at first. Hope you enjoyed the review, and I'd like to say another big thank you to my Patreon supporters who help to keep this channel trucking on. Check it out in the description below for all kinds of bonus content, and ciao for now.